Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant, hands-on software architect, and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In this lesson, we're going to continue one more time with analyzing architecture and take a look at those micro-level kind of analysis. In other words, what I want to specifically talk about in this short lesson are really those code metrics that matter when analyzing software architecture. Again, I'm guessing all of you are very tired of this particular image, but since lesson seven, we've really been talking about analyzing software architecture. And what we're actually doing is looking for these cracks. And so that's what we're going to look at from analyzing software itself. So remember, we had two different kinds of views or ways of looking at analyzing software architecture, those micro level and macro level. You know, the past couple of lessons in we've been looking at really those macro level techniques. We haven't really looked at software. Now what we're going to do is when analyzing software, we're going to be looking at those elements that we can actually derive from the software to analyze software architecture. And what it really spells out are those specific metrics that we gain from all the various tools we can use, whether it be sonar, sonar graph, whether it be uh, Code City, uh, Source Monitor, X-Ray, uh, JDepend, Endepend, all of these kind of tools generate metrics. And so let's take a look at some of the common metrics that I use for actually analyzing structural decay within architecture. And of course, one of those first of metrics that we use is cyclomatic complexity. Now, isn't it interesting that most developers I know throw this term around all the time. Well, I want to reduce my cyclomatic complexity or, well, we got to watch out for cyclomatic complexity. But do we really know what it means? Because the calculation for cyclomatic complexity is really just a numerical value rec representing the complexity of a function or a particular method. And that calculation is e minus n plus 2. And that's edges minus nodes plus 2. And this is how you form the calculation. And so if we take a look at a piece of source source <laughs> source code, we can see, you know, int max equals a, if a is less than b, then make the max b, otherwise return max, which is a. And if we take a look at this simple kind of code, the edges are the pathways between certain statements, whereas the nodes, which is n in that calculation, is actually the number of nodes. Let's take a, a more complicated example. Here's a method, if c1, f1, else f2, then end. If c2, f3, else f4, end. And if we kind of map this particular method right here, we can kind of see that if C1, notice how on the right hand side it branches into function one or function two, and then both go back to the next if statement. And if we look at our calculation, V of G equals E minus N plus two, edges minus nodes plus two. And so let's count the number of edges we have. And these are pathways between the code. And we notice we have eight pathways. If we look at the nodes, these are actually landing points. This is where code actually exists. And if we count all these, including the ending point, and that's important, by the way, we end up getting seven. And so we get a cyclomatic complexity of three. Woohoo! What do you think? Everybody listening, is that good or bad? And you know, I don't know. And this is exactly one of the problems that we face with metrics. In other words, as architects, we don't necessarily care about these numbers. What we really care about are the trends in these numbers. Are things getting worse or are things getting better? You know, sometimes as architects, we get removed from the day-to-day -day operations of the development teams who sometimes are actually looking at these numbers. I, as a developer, may know I've got a cyclomatic complexity of five, which is way too much. And in the next iteration, I'm going to deal with that. And this is one of the problems that we face with analyzing architecture from a micro standpoint. We run these tools, we run these metrics, and unfortunately, we take action on those way too soon. And so the call to action here, everybody, is as an architect, when we're kind of analyzing this whole thing about architecture, we want to wait for it. In other words, we want to analyze the trends. 
And specifically, this is only one out of a hundred metrics. And so I hope you're all seated because this is going to take about 10 hours to describe all of them. No, fortunately not, because our goal here in this short lesson is really to teach you how to negotiate the signal to noise ratio. In other words, there's so much noise that's generated from so many of these tools. And some of those metrics are important to various audiences, especially developers. But that blue line that you see there, that's the signal. That's exactly what we want to extract as architects. And so let me show you some of the seven core metrics that I actually look at as an architect that matter to me. And the first two are fairly related. It's the number of classes per package and the number of lines of source code, usually per package. Um, I like to roll these up because as we saw in Lesson 8, and if you haven't seen that, please watch Lesson 8 because what that really showed us is that we need to deal with components when we're analyzing architecture. And these two are the metrics I referred to in Lesson 8 regarding the size of the component. In other words, number of classes, number of lines gives us a good metric in terms of the size. Now, suppose you have 23 classes with 9,000 lines of code. Again, those numbers tend to be meaningless unless we can compare them against other components to see if they're all around the same size, but more importantly, start tracking these iteration after iteration after iteration to see if that size starts increasing. That is the form of structural decay. Now, the other thing I look at is the average complexity. Now, this is the Steve McConnell kind of definition of complexity from his great book, Code Complete. And this is actually one plus the number of paths through a method. You know, a general range is usually two to four, but this is a great, and that's, that's the average two to four per class. And this is a great metric because it's a little more understandable than that cyclomatic complexity. In other words, this has some sort of meaning that if I see uh, an average range of, of six, I know that I've got a lot of paths going through that method on average. And, uh, and that's kind of a metric to me to show complexity, which it directly impacts the overall maintainability of the application, the ease of testing, the risk of deployment. These are how they relate to architecture. You know, a couple of um, what I like to call Chide and Chem metrics are the, uh, the depth of inheritance tree. Now, here's where we start getting into um, splitting hairs because the DIT, the death, I'm sorry, I usually call it the death of inheritance tree because I do a lot of conversions to microservices from monoliths. And this is one of those metrics that matter to me from a modularity and ease of separation standpoint. But here's a lesson learned that I, um, I, I, I had was um, I used to look at the depth of inheritance tree per classes. And, and if it was extensive, I used to make assumptions that this is going to be a hard application monolith to tease apart. And since experiencing that, I've learned that I don't necessarily care as an architect that there is a high level, a high number of depth of inheritance tree. And this is all the abstract classes and interfaces that you can extend within a package, within a component, I really don't care. What I care about is that depth of inheritance tree, or what I like to call the death of inheritance, DIT, across components. Because if we're gonna start teasing apart a monolith and start breaking apart to a level of modularity, what this tells me is that's gonna be really hard because those particular classes that are inherited from other kinds of, of packages, if each of those components becomes a service, those become shared libraries. And as we found in the previous uh, uh, lesson, within microservices, that is one of the elements of structural decay. Now, combined with kind of the average complexity, you might want to use the old classic WMC. And this is the sum of the cyclomatic complexity on weighted methods per class. It's, it's, it's a similar kind of complexity metric. You know, in this case, I have to tell you, everyone listening, it doesn't really matter whether you use the Steve McConnell complexity metric or the weighted methods per class on that calculation we saw earlier, because the point is what we're looking for is that trend analysis. And finally, the last two, perhaps more most important metrics are CE, which is that efferent coupling that we saw uh, way back, I believe in lesson eight, I think it was, um, and also CA, the afferent coupling count as well. And so these metrics here help divide 
or qualify that signal to noise ratio so that we're focusing more on what's important to us as architects as opposed to just uh, uh, how successful or how healthy our code base is. So this has been kind of a less than 11 analyzing architecture within those metrics of, of analyzing source code, that micro piece. And again, this is Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. And next week, we'll kind of be starting another thing. We've been doing a lot with analyzing architecture. So I'm going to start with a different kind of theme for starting lesson 12. But this has been a good kind of run on just the kind of the culmination of analyzing software architecture. Thank you so much. And keep listening, everybody. Bye-bye.